Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Continuing the series of press tool design, and today we are going to see the types of press tools like simple tool, compound tool, combination tool, bending tool, drawing tool, and progressive tool. To calculate the cutting force for press tool operation so that we can select the suitable press machine for the particular press tool. What is shear angle? What is its purpose? What is single and double shear angle? In which operations we are providing shear angle on various elements like punch or die? All we are going to see in this video. Also going to learn the formula for calculating the cutting force. Also going to see the methods of uh, reducing the cutting forces, solving the problems of cutting force. And we will see some assignment also. I am explaining the method of calculate press force workout problems. Also we are going to see the relation of cutting force to sharing action. We are going to see the necessity for reducing the cutting force. Explaining the method used for reducing the press force. And many more things we are going to cover in this video. So friends watch this video till the end. If you are new to my channel and like my videos then please like, share and subscribe my channel to get the notification of my upcoming videos. What is cutting force? Cutting force is the force which has to act on the stock material in order to cut out the blank or slug. This determines the capacity of the press machine to be used for the particular press tool. Calculation of a cutting force. The cutting force is equal to L S L max where L is the length of periphery to be cut in millimeters. S yes, is the sheet thickness in millimeters and tau max is the shear strength of stock material and unit is newton per mm square. Hello friends, before going to start the understanding of shearing operation, we have to get the idea about the shear theory. When any shear operation happens due to the material properties, so that stress strain curve understanding is necessary. Look at the image on the screen, stress strain curve is there, stress strain curve for the ductile material. We have to understand the terms about the elastic limit, ultimate stress limit and breaking stress. These are the three basic terms we should have to understand. Elastic limit, when we are applying any force so that the material will deform and after removing the force, the material will regain its original shape. The property of that material is called as the elastic and the point stress strain curve which we are looking on the graph that point is called as the elastic limit of that material. Second is the ultimate stress limit. It is the largest value of stress obtained in tension test. After applying a force the material will deform to its permanent shape. It will not get again or regain its original shape because that limit is already crossed. Third is the breaking stress. At this point, stress at which specimen breaks away after up to that certain point when we are continuing applying the force, the workpiece or the specimen will become break. That is our the break breaking stress point of the stress strain curve. You can see in the image. Now we are going to see the relationship between the shearing action or you can say shearing force and cutting force. You can see in the diagram the three critical stages mainly we are going to first is the plastic deformation, second penetration, third is the fracture. The three critical stages of shearing action are related to the cutting force. When press machines acts load up rapidly during the plastic deformation stage, it continues to increase while penetration takes place. The accumulated load is suddenly released when fracture occurs. You can see the curve level of near the line. You can see the curve level of near the bottom. The last portion of the load curve represents frictional resistance developed. As the punch travels through the stock material, the blank or slug passing through the die, proper cutting clearance condition exists between the punch and the die fracture will occur when cutting force equals the shear strength of the material. 
now we are going to see the methods of reducing press force how we can reduce the press force practically in some cases it would be necessary to reduce the cutting force to prevent the press overloading a method to reduce the press force is to grind the face of a punch or die at a small shear angle with reference to the horizontal plane you can see in the image this reduces the area of contact during the shear at any one time you can see the image on the screen shear angle highlighted there providing shear angle also reduces the shock to the press and smoothener out to the cutting operation the shear angle should provide a change in punch length from 1 to 1.5 times the sheet thickness you can see in the image that is the shear angle double shear angle is preferred over single shear angle because it does not create a lateral forces double shear angled punches should be concave to prevent the stretching the material before it to cut in the image you can see the double shear angle to prevent the distortion of the stock material the blanking operation the shear angle will be on the die member and for piercing operation the shear angle will be on the punch member that is the important thing we should have to be concentrate during blanking operation we are providing shear angle on the die member and for the piercing operation we are providing shear angle on the punch member you can see in the images for the blanking operation we have already provided the shear angle on the die and for the piercing operation we are we have provided the shear angle on the punch it is more clear from the image in my earlier videos i have explained the various types of punches and in the description box i have provided the link also so those are new viewers who want to know the types of punches they can please refer below videos because the another method to reduce the cutting force is to step punch lengths in stepped punch lengths punches or groups of punches are made progressively shorter by the about one sheet thickness you can see in the image that is called as the stepped punches in my earlier video i have explained the various types of punches please refer the below link going to see the types of press tools like simple tool compound tool combination tool bending tool drawing tool and progressive tool in case of a simple tool this tool is designed to perform the piercing and blanking operations that means the construction of this tool is very simple in the image you can see construction of this tool punch come and work piece is there we have provided the die and the after cutting the operation you can get the scrap this is the construction of the simple tool it is very simple so it is called as the simple tool now we are going to see the compound tool blanking and piercing both the operations performed in a single stroke that tool is called as the compound tool you can see the image the piercing punch and the blanking punch so in the one stroke we are getting the required shape so the construction of this tool is little bit typical now we are going to see the combination tool cutting and forming both the operations you can also say cutting and non cutting operation both operations are combined and carried out in a single stroke in the image you can see in a single stroke we can get the cutting operation as well as the forming a part v shape like structure you can see in the image so this tool is called as the combination tool it is combining the two operations like cutting and forming operation that means cutting and non cutting so it is called as the combination tool bending tool in bending tool it is used for the bending of the components in a specified shape so it is called as the bending tool like a v bend tool u bend tool you can see in the image for more clarification for more clarity simply punch is coming from the topward direction and a die so that the work piece will becomes bend in u shape in the die or v shape that is called as the bending tool construction wise bending tool construction is very simple now we are going to see the drawing tool drawing is a process of 
axial elongation through the application of axial force so that we can apply the pressure on the punch so that the material thickness will becomes constant but it goes deeper so called as the drawing tool just like the glass sheet metal glass we have to understand in the image you can see punch is there work piece having a uniform sheet metal thickness to be maintained inside the die that is called as the drawing tool and the operation is more deeper then it is called as the deep draw operations or deep drawing tool now the we are going to see the progressive tool the work piece moves from one station to another with separate operations being performed at each station is called as the progressive tool in the diagram you can see there is a punch and with separate operations will being performed at each station that means it is progressive it shows the progress in every station so called as the progressive tool construction wise progressive tool is little bit complex in my earlier videos i have explained about the types of operations like cutting operations non cutting operations and i am giving the link in the description box now practically we are calculating the press force of the given diagram you can see the image on the screen we should have to calculate the cutting force as per our formula cutting force is equal to length of perimeter of the diagram multiplied by sheet thickness and multiplied by shear strength of the material that is called as the tau max in the diagram you can see the perimeter it is calculated there are two ways to calculate the perimeter of the given image or any specified profile first is the manual you can just calculate manually like in manually in the diagram we can see that the length which we have provided the dimensions like 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 after that we should have to add 60 plus 60 and again we should have to add 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 now we are going to add the 3 plus 3 that means it is 6 six, 6 mm length for the holes after that we should have to add the slot dimensions in which is inside in the image so should have to add 25 plus 6 plus 25 plus 6 so the total is you can see in the image there is 405.3982 mm that means 405.40 mm is the perimeter that is our length of perimeter the image we are considering the sheet metal thickness is 3 mm so we can calculate that 405.40 multiply by 3 and we are calculating the mild steel we are considering as a mild steel that material of 3 mm sheet of the mild steel and the tau max shear strength of mild steel is provided 360 newton per mm square so we can take that value from the standard and we can calculate the cutting force we can get the value 4,37,832 newton 4,37,832 newton divided by 1000 and the value is 437.83 kilo newton that means to cut that sheet of 3 mm of the required shape we should have to provide press machine of minimum 437.83 kilo newton that is the cutting force required at least this force and if we multiply by that number of a factor of safety so that we can get the at least that value of a press which we are going to use to cut that desired shape of a mild steel plate of having the thickness of 3 mm so in such a way that we can decide the press machine and its tonnage to cut the sheets for a practice you can calculate the cutting forces of below images which i am going to provide you for a practice purpose friends hope oh, you like this video so like and subscribe my channel for getting notification of my upcoming videos please